Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another Deep Rock Galactic video. In today's video, I'm going to be going over the boss type enemies of Hoxies, Dreadnoughts. What are they? What they do? And overall, give a few tips here and there. Most of the Dreadnoughts can be found in the elimination mission type, with one exception. We'll go over that in a bit. There are a total of three types of Dreadnoughts. I'm sorry if you watch this video and it becomes outdated with more Dreadnoughts. But for now, we're going to start with my most favorite boss type, the twins, Arbalisk and Lacerator. With Arbalisk in his first phase, that's right, you heard me correctly from software players. There are phases. In Arbalisk's first phase, he'll be crawling on the walls and ceilings, shooting mines down and laughing maniacally at you as you die. Or, if you listen for this sound cue, that means you should move out of the way, so you don't take any damage. Dummy. As for Lacerator, he likes to get up close and personal, shooting flames at you. But, when you're from far away from Lacerator, he will shoot these rock-like projectiles at you that go through terrain. When you hear this sound cue, you'll know he's doing this attack. Remember. When he does this attack, he'll be shooting from his left side, keep this in mind, I said his left side, then his right side, then down the middle. So, from your perspective, it'll start from your right, then left, then middle. Eventually, you will deal enough damage to the twins for them to burrow away, reappearing to heal all their armor back, and somewhat split the health. This will then put the twins into phase two. Basically, the twins will do the same attacks as before, but now with some new moves. Arbalist now fires a shotgun fireball type blast at you, whether you are too close or too far from him. If you're too close to Arbalist when he does this blast, just hope that he misses and Molly is in the way to take the blast. As for when you're too far from Arbalist, you can somewhat dodge in between the fireballs. You'll Ta still take some splash damage, though, but that's fine. You can walk it off, champ. As for Lacerator in Phase 2, he will burrow away, like, a lot more, only to come back up under your feet, blasting any dwarf away, causing you to take fall damage. That could either hurt you or be fatal. Lacerator gives off this visual effect when he's about to do this, so keep out for this and watch where you land if he gets you. Finally, when you eventually kill one of the twins, one of two things can happen. One, they'll be mad, of course. But two, try to kill Arblisk before Lacerator, because if you kill Lacerator first, then this will happen. Arblisk throws a bit of a tantrum like a baby. As for Lacerator, he'll kind of just scream at you, like your mom calling you down for dinner. Essentially, though, they'll become a little bit faster during this so-called third phase, but they should be pretty low health, so you'll be able to take them out pretty quickly. Now on to the next boss. This one, I would say, is neither my favorite or most hated boss, but a pretty chill boss fight altogether. Of course, I'm talking about the Glyphid Dreadnought. Dreadnought. <laughs> this boy has been in the game since the beginning, and is, I believe, the only Dreadnought that can spawn on any mission with a 1 out of 65 chance or a 1.53% uh, chance of spawning when a swarm is announced. That's kind of insane, <laughs> considering the fact that I've only ever had this happen to me twice. Um, and I also believe this is needed for an achievement, but um, you can kind of just like cheat that achievement. Anyways, um, don't fret because this boy isn't really that threatening when you know his attack patterns. Plus, while getting footage for this video, he got stuck and I had to help him <laughs> help him out. <laughs> uh, poor, poor Glyphid Dreadnought. Um, the Glyphid Dreadnought is essentially just a bigger Praetorian. The only main difference is that he shoots fireballs that do massive and has his weak point covered up with a shield. Which, of course, when broken, will make the Glyphid get into a frenzy-like mode, charging at you really fast and trying to bite you a lot more. 
as well as shoot these egg-like blasts that cause bugs to target you and spawn swarmers. The swarmers that's, that will spawn vary depending on the hazard level and how many dwarves you have with you on the mission. The Glyphid also has a 360 AoE stomp attack that also does massive damage up close. When he starts to make this sound cue and have these floating rocks appear, that means that you should run. I'm coming for you. No, but in all seriousness, the rocks are floating. The rocks that are floating show the area in which the attack will take place. So just get out of the zone with the floating rocks and you should be fine. See, like I said, he ain't got much going for him. Sorry, but I do feel really bad for bullying this boy. And on the last dreadnought, we have my least favorite, the hive guard. Now, I don't hate the hive guard, I just don't like how tedious the fight makes me feel. Let me explain. So, how the hive guard works is he'll first spawn in sentinels that help him fight for him. These sentinels are somewhat like Praetorians with a weak point on the back. When playing by yourself, the hive guard will usually spawn in three sentinels. But when playing with other others, the amount of sentinels can go from five to eight sentinels. Once the sentinels have been defeated, Hive Guard will then open up three weak point spores that you have to shoot at to then only finally be able to deal some damage to the weak point on the back of Hive Guard's body. During this, Hive Guard will be sending out these explosive rocks as a defense to try and stop you from attacking its weak point. These rocks are dangerous and can almost one shot you. Hey, you, you're finally awake. But if you're able to dodge the exploding rocks and deal enough damage, guess what your reward is? A second phase? Nope. Hive Guard spawns in more sentinels and you repeat the same cycle until you kill it. See the problem here? What makes me feel tedious about this fight is the wash, rinse, and repeat pattern you get yourself into when fighting the lame guard. What you would probably probably make this fight a little less like that is if the sentinels were continuously spawning uh maybe like around 25 to 20 seconds one spawns in and the spores that hive guard has on its body should always be there just make them a little bit smaller so they're a little bit harder to hit and ha make them have more health so then you can continuously be fighting and not feel like you have to wait in between the fight just to deal a little bit of damage. Now, it's not uh, too bad if you're playing with uh, another dwarf with you, but when you're playing by yourself, it is very, very tedious. And I know people will either disagree with me and say Hive Guard is perfectly fine, or some will agree with me. Either way, this boy is stinky and we're moving on. So as far as tips go, they all vary depending on what class you're playing in Deep Rock Galactic. These classes consist of fall damage, where am I, to many bots, and for the most of the attacks that the dreadnoughts do, I would recommend taking the dash perk. That way you can get out of the glyphid's stomp attacks. Dodge the fireball shotgun blast from Arbalisk, Hive Guard's explosive rocks, and Last Raider trying to light you ablaze. Of course, if you're playing a scout, you don't have to worry about this since you didn't have a grappling hook. Unless you don't know how to use that, then good luck. <laughs> Some recommended overclocks I would take for Gunner um, are Big Bertha on the Thunderhead because it does do massive damage for the for the dreadnoughts. Um, and elephant rounds uh, for the secondary because that also does a really high damage. Big Bertha, or maybe Neurotoxin Payload as well, because Neurotoxin Payload, what it does is it, it also clips through, and it can deal that toxin damage and slow down the Dreadnoughts for your teammates. Plus, you don't have to really pay attention to where you're hitting, like, Hive Guard on the body or the Glyphid Dreadnought on the body. So it's it's kind of like a no-brainer there with the Thunderhead. Um, With the Hurricane, I'd suggest taking the Homebrew fuel overclock which does more uh insane direct damage for scout i'd probably take the super cooling chamber because that also does really high damage as well and it just helps um 
with getting rid of the dreadnoughts a little bit easier. Like your team could just be like, let's say with the Glyphid Dreadnought, you could just you could break open the shield for the Glyphid Dreadnought, and then Scout can just aim with super cooling chamber and just deal like massive, massive amount of damage. Trifork volley with the um the shark bolt and the electric bolts are also a really good combo to be taking uh on scout's uh shark bolt because with the electric bolts you can shoot them into the dreadnoughts and slow them down for your team to be able to do massive damage with and the triforg volley um if taking the electric shaft to a uh, fifth gear modification will attract the the triple bolts into the the dreadnoughts that are electrocuted so that's that's also a really good wombo combo that you can do for ng some overclocks you could take with him are of course hyper propellant on the grenade launcher that just essentially turns your grenade launcher into this like really heavy hitting railgun that just does really high damage um for the locky i would suggest taking uh, executioner i recently did a video on it actually with an elimination and it, it was really really fun to take i was doing really high damage and heavy hitting and i i was also told that the uh neuro lasso lasso on the um the locky is really good too i gotta try that out one day as well basically what a neuro lasso does is it slows down the um bug that you have uh, locked on so what you could do is like you can just lock on to the dreadnought with it and it slow it down like completely letting you your team be able to just like dog pile basically on the dreadnought and last but not least the one that bullies the dreadnoughts the most driller his overclocks i highly recommend um sludge blast like oh my gosh this this overclock recently got changed as well i want to say recently got changed but it did get changed to do insane direct damage. Like, oh my God, it's so good. It, it just basically, you don't even have to really care where you're aiming the, um, the, the sludge pump. You can just literally look at the, like, especially the dreadnought, you can just look at him and just be like, all right, you're dead. And just do a bunch of charge shots and wreck him immediately with the cryo cannon. Uh, I did take like, the ice storm build like a, a full damage ice storm build and i had a friend uh also take a freezing build that it's another really good like wombo combo you can do like we killed the twins in a matter of i believe 50 seconds on a has five mission it was insane <laughs> just you take ice storm and another person takes like i don't know like tuned cooler or just like something that adds a lot of freezing power and you just you're just going to wreck the dreadnoughts, dude. <laughs> and that's the dreadnoughts, y'all. I hope this video helps those green beards out there who have just started the game. And I hope you all enjoyed this video. Subscribe for more content like this in the future. And I'll see y'all in the caves. Rock and stone, miners.